Joe's and Jane's. Time for another Patreon special mission. This one's from General Hector Martinez, and it's for one of my favorite vehicles that occupies the deck of the ultimate USS flag. There it is, left ticket! It's the G.I. Joe Tomahawk. Man, that's what I call living. I'll be taking a look at the original 1986 version, as well as the spectacular Eagle Hawk retool from the Retaliation line in 2013. Let's start with the original 1986 release. Welcome to ancient history. The box featured the standard, gorgeous, customized box art of the chopper itself. And like the other larger box vehicles, did not feature a window for the lift ticket figure included, just a picture. The back of the box featured the standard black and white image with detailed info on all the features and weaponry. And inside were the blueprints, which made all of the Joe vehicles seem so much more real. Images courtesy of 3djoes.com, your one-stop source for high-quality scans of vintage Joe artwork. The packaging was always fantastic for G.I. Joe, but it's what's inside that really counts. Roger! What is this? Huh? Oh, this? Oh, it's a tomahawk. I know, Lift Ticket, it's just an expression. Oh, brother. It can be said that a lot of toy lines start to stray from the original concept by the fifth year of their run, if they even make it that long. But the Tomahawk looks like something that would have fit in perfectly with the Year One Joes. While some of the vehicles before it had a bit of a futuristic or sci-fi spin on them, the Tomahawk is pure military. Like the Sky Striker, it doesn't represent an actual military vehicle, but is heavily inspired by a couple of real ones. The Marine CH-46 Sea Knight, and the Army CH-47 Chinook. It's a three-engine tandem rotor helicopter that was used primarily in the show as a rescue chopper. When the Sky Strikers and Conquests blasted off into battle, you could bet one thing. Rescue backup following, yo Joe! Lifeline, the pacifist medic, also released in 1986, was just as synonymous with this chopper as its pilot lift ticket was. There are still some kids trapped inside! Countless Joes, as well as civilians, were saved thanks to Lifeline. Thanks to Lifeline? Let's take a look at some of the rescue properties. There was a hook on the bottom, which could be used to haul cargo, but I think more kids used it to let Lifeline swing into action like a modern-day Errol Flynn or Indiana Jones. Grab hold! This hook and spool was a removable panel that could be detached from underneath. Unfortunately, the flight stand from TS Hobbies can't hold the tomahawk if the hook panel is in. It has to be removed for the stand to be able to grip the body of the chopper. The back featured a cargo door that could be opened and used as a ramp to load injured Joes. You were so brave. No, they're the brave ones. The interior of the back cargo space offered the option of seating up to five figures. Give me some room, you guys are crowding me. And since all of the seats were removable, you could make room for a stretcher or remove all of the seats and side guns to make room for some cargo. Now this space is deceptively small. It looks like a lot of space, but there are very few Joe vehicles that can actually fit in there. Even some of the smaller vehicles, like the Polar Battle Bear, can't fit. But it is possible to squeeze a ram cycle in on an angle, or a recon sled if you remove the canopy. The Tomahawk wasn't just a rescue chopper, it could hold its own in a dogfight as well. Hostile pursuit ships, close it fast! A raven's after me! Underneath the cockpit was a barreled XM197 20mm cannon that was sure to poke a few holes in Cobra's plans. On each side is three small bombs and two large missiles. And there's a pair of 50 cal machine guns for passengers in the back to defend the chopper from either side. Hold still so we can blast them! If I hold still, they'll blast us! The tail featured a vertical stabilizing rotor that could pivot all the way around, and the blades could be spun by twisting the knob. Looks like this one could use a little grease. And two large rotors on top. A common issue with many of these vintage tomahawks is that the blades have drooped over the years, and they either hit the body of the chopper, or hit the other set of blades when you spin them. 
That's one advantage the Dragonfly had, since drooping blades didn't collide with the body of the ship. And the Dragonfly also had a trigger to activate the blades. In classic G.I. Joe fashion, the Tomahawk had extra hidden detail underneath removable engine covers, giving your lift ticket figure something to do in between rescue missions. Lifeline, hand me the crescent wrench, will you? No! Well, why not for crying out loud? Well, because helping you arm a rescue chopper goes against my principles, that's why. Oh, brother. There were three sets of wheels underneath that still roll nicely, and the cockpit was a two-seater that featured a see-through canopy. The pegs that hold it in are fragile, though. One of them is broken on mine, but as long as you still have one peg, the canopy will still hold in place in either open or closed position. The cockpit featured a pair of control sticks that could move forward and back. It is a bit tricky to fit a figure into them, but it looks cool having an actual stick for the pilots to grip once you get them in there, which we're sorely missing from the Dragonfly and Sky Striker. And let's talk about the pilot. The Tomahawk included Lift Ticket. His bio card reads, Codename, Lift Ticket, Tomahawk Pilot. File name, Sikorsky? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> close enough. Victor W. Primary military specialty, Rotary Wing Aircraft Pilot. Secondary military specialty, Fixed Wing Aircraft Pilot. Birthplace, Lawton, Oklahoma. His bio reads, Lift Ticket was one of those guys who joined the army to get out of his hometown. The big difference with Lift Ticket is that he scored so high on the aptitude test that he qualified for West Point Prep, OCS, and Flight Warrant Officer School. Nobody in Lawton ever suspected he was that smart. Apparently, neither did Lift Ticket, since he opted for Flight Warrant School over the others, thinking it was the only one that offered training applicable to civilian employment. And the quote reads, getting into a target area is comparatively easy. You wait until dark and get sneaky. Now getting out after some caps have been popped and a can of firefights been opened, well, that's another story. All you can do is squat on the LZ and hope that whoever's driving the extraction chopper is skillful, persistent, lucky, and bulletproof. Lift Ticket satisfies the first three requirements, and he's working on the fourth. Lift Ticket only included one accessory, the often lost black microphone. In 2009, Lift Ticket received the anniversary treatment with a figure that was released with the Ghost Hawk, aka Skyhawk. This is how I like my updates. The look of the original has been faithfully maintained with a few upgrades. The knife on his leg is now removable, and his helmet is removable too, giving us a look at his flowing black locks. Oh brother. The vest is removable and has a hole in the back so he can carry a backpack. And the microphone is not removable from the helmet, ensuring it won't get lost like the original often was. A lot of Joe vehicle drivers and pilots got less screen time in the show than their ride did, but Lift Ticket was an exception. He had quite a few appearances in the third season of G.I. Joe, and it may have had something to do with the person who voiced him, Michael Bell, the exceptional voice actor who also brought Duke to life. I never realized Bell voiced Lift Ticket as well until researching this video, even though I've heard Bell talk to himself, so to speak, on the cartoon, which really shows you his range. We'll never find Van Mark's ski lodge. I think we just did, Duke. Lift Ticket was also one of the tougher Joes. I'll show you crybabies how to handle this! Which served as a nice yin and yang to Lifeline, the conscientious objector who he was often paired up with on the show. It was nice to know that whenever Lifeline got himself in over his head, his okie pal was more than capable of bailing him out. Is this a private party? Or can anyone dance? Best brawl I've had all week. They're gonna be okay. No oh, brother. In the History of Cops video, I mentioned a connection between cops and G.I. Joe through Checkpoint and Beachhead. I believe I may have found another connection between the two. Lift Ticket's last name, as I mentioned, is Sikorsky, and the pilot of the air raid helicopter on Cops was Hugh S. Sikorsky, codenamed Bullseye. The spelling is different, one with an I and one with a Y, but Bullseye's file card mentions he did serve as an army pilot before joining Cops. Hmm, makes you wonder if Larry Hama was trying to make another Joe Cops connection, 
or it's just a coincidence and he likes to name all of his pilots Sikorsky. In 2013, a new version of the Tomahawk got an update with the Eagle Hawk. But why bother? Because as hard as it may be for fans of the original to believe, there was a bit of room for improvement. Are you crazy? Nope, I'm dead serious. While I wouldn't call the Eagle Hawk better than the Tomahawk, there are definitely some awesome upgrades. One of those, though, is not the figure. The Eagle Hawk included a lift ticket figure that looked nothing like the original. He just looked like a generic helicopter pilot. He did include a pair of headsets, though, to use for other Joe figures. So for the complete anniversary experience, I use the Ghost Hawk lift ticket with this chopper. Another feature I wouldn't necessarily call an upgrade is the tinted canopy. I prefer the clear original one, which gives a better view of the pilots inside. One thing I would call a huge upgrade is these holes on either side of the chopper which hold backpacks. This is really handy since the figures don't fit well in the seats with their backpacks on, and the original Tomahawk didn't have a neat storage area for them. And since the Eagle Hawk holds five figures in the cargo area like the original, there are even more peg holes inside at the end of the ramp to hold more backpacks. It's nice to not have this gear bouncing around loose since lift tickets sometimes doesn't give the smoothest ride. Just don't forget to put the pack on when you deploy your Joes, or lift ticket will remind you as only he can. Put it on, smart guy! Another improvement, in my opinion, is the hook is now built into the body of the chopper, so it won't accidentally slide out. And the dial is easier to access now being on the side instead of underneath. So now you can have your hook and your TS Hobbies flight stand too. The twin 50 cal machine guns have been upgraded too. More detail on them and two grip points for the figures. Although the 25th anniversary style figures have trouble getting their hands that close together. Another big upgrade was inside the cockpit. The original had a sticker for the gauges but the Eagle Hawk has sculpted details. There's more detail on the seats too, and the control stick has a lot more maneuverability on it as well. And in a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, the missiles and bombs are pretty much the same, as well as how the tail rotor operates. Although this one spins a lot better than on my original Tomahawk. Opinions might be split on the seats in the cargo area. This time they're not removable, so you won't be able to haul small vehicles or make room for stretcher Joes. I do like how the floor has been recessed though on the new version, whereas on the original they were higher up. The rotors work the same as the original as well, just give them a spin. Okay Chuckles, give this whirly bird a twirl! Oh, brother. But a huge improvement is the ability to fold the blades in. This is a big plus for people who don't have a lot of space to display this chopper. With the blades folded in, it can now fit on a narrow shelf, or not take up quite as much space on the deck of your flag. The G.I. Joe Tomahawk may have been designated a rescue chopper, but with lift ticket behind the glass, Cobra had to be on their toes because he was one Joe that was always spoiling for a fight. And while the jets could only do strafe runs, the Tomahawk provided some steady air support against ground cobra attacks, or other nasty things that may have crawled out of the Earth's core. Whether it's the classic original from 1986 or the fantastic update from 2013, 
The G.I. Joe Tomahawk is a cut above most choppers and an integral part of any Joe Air Force. Dead on! Thanks to Hector Martinez for the request. Got one yourself? Become a general or ninja level Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash michaelmercy and give the orders. Thanks for watching, feel free to share, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Yo Joe!